South Bar, and I work with the Mozilla Foundation on a project called Webmaker, which is about uh, providing a basis of web literacy through different tools and programs as a form of uh, digital empowerment. I guess like many humans, I have a long experience with openness because our culture and the way that we live as open is embedded in it when you're even from a very young age you watch the gestures and words of your parents and you remix it and make it your own. So the whole, all of human culture at the beginning has openness embedded in it. And in some ways we've just created artificial restrictions to this openness that's just very natural. So I guess my openness has started since I was zero years old, but in a more professional and uh, precise category. Um, I used to work with uh, Creative Commons, uh, coordinating the international projects in different countries. And now with Mozilla working on how we can use the open web as a mode of technological empowerment, um, where learning basic web literacy becomes a way that people can participate fully on. So at Mozilla, we're working to uh, help train uh, and level up the skills of our community members. So for example, we're here in Bangalore, where yesterday we did a train the trainer event, where we're teaching people how to teach the web. And so we did a training yesterday, and now today we're at the Maker Party Bangalore, where the people who got the training are now teaching new people basic web skills. The Train the Trainer program has a, it's a mixture of online and offline learning, blended learning. So you, we, in the future, we want to have um, one week of an online course, one week offline in-person training, and then one week to follow up back online, so that you have this mixture of uh, collaborative online and offline. We just uh, ran a MOOC, a massive open online course called Teach the Web, with about 5,000 people who wanted to learn how to teach the web. And we approach it from a make first experience. So we don't give any lectures, we don't have any like tutorials, like very you know boring, dry tutorials, but instead it's about um, it's about web making. So as in the process of making, you're learning the technology. I think one of the biggest challenges at the moment for us, even though Mozilla historically has been very good at localization, where the WebMaker project is a little bit behind, uh, we face in a lot of areas um, just lack of access because the tools are not yet localized, although they will be hopefully in the next two or three months. And we also face huge challenges when you're trying to teach the web, but many places don't have connectivity or don't have very low bandwidth. So one of the things we've been practicing also in the trainer trainer programs is how to teach the web when you don't have internet. So by drawing, for example, the structure of a website by hand, you know, code by hand, or paper prototyping, or other activities where you can still learn the basics of the web without needing an internet connection. We don't take advantage enough of the different global localization communities we have in the world. I mean, if you could, you could name ten open source projects that have active localization communities that don't collaborate that much amongst each other. I think we could be more strategic and systematic, for example, the Wikimedia projects meet the Mozilla projects, meet the Creative Commons projects, you know, there's tons of these groups and each place we almost start from scratch trying to find people and um, maybe there are just more strategic ways to combine, for example, the strings or the, um, the what's the word called? Um, when you have the memory of the localization, like the strings that they're translated yeah. already, like we could actually make those shared resources. So if somebody has to translate the word license, for example, they don't have to do it over and over again. It's already part of this like shared. Uh, it's really been great to be here in Bangalore and to see both like these spaces and these communities come together in a, um, I think, very inspiring way. So I'm curious where how openness can continue to evolve uh, here and how we can connect to also global efforts.